on this program tonight, we are going to look in the book of Psalms about uh, those that uh, bear false witness. And I want you to understand that uh, when we talk about bearing false witness, we're talking about one of the major crimes of the Bible. Uh, bearing false witness is the same as sowing discord, as is gossip and all of the other things, the backbiting and all that the Bible makes reference to when the tongue becomes a whip or a fiery serpent uh, set on fire by the very course of hell itself. It is the first name, slander is the first name given to Satan in the Bible, the first name attributed to him. It is what he does by and large is slanders. I've shared with you this several times on the program and hopefully, hopefully it's settling in. The uh, slander is a form of murder. It is actually an act of murder. It's not the pulling of the trigger, but it is the destruction of one's name, doing it intentionally. The destruction of a person's name, their worth, their value, who they are, their influence. It is the killing of that. And people who hesitates to pull the trigger on someone, but yet needs them to be removed or needs them to be out of the way, well, of course, slander to try to destroy the person's ability to catch any footing and to be voted for or to, uh, to be respected or whatever the case may be. And they eliminate them that way through slander. But if slander does not work, these devilish souls will resort to the pulling of the trigger. They will resort to murder. They always have, they always will. The characteristics of this particular sin, slander, has always been the same. And where it starts at point A, it ends at point B, always. Either they are successful in their campaigns to butcher, to murder a person's name, his reputation, and all that he is by slander, or either they will pull the trigger. We see exactly the same thing take place in the life of Jesus. Before we talk about that, let me read to you this passage of Scripture that's found in the book of Psalms, chapter 35, verse 11 and 12. It says, False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. Now, the psalmist, including David, had faced tremendous slander as well as the Lord Jesus Christ. It was with Jesus that the scribes and the Pharisees and the powers that was in his day, it was against Jesus that they sowed slander. They tried to butcher him. They tried to break up the following. It was very difficult to do because Jesus was not just a mouther. He was not a politician as they were. He was not one who just talked, but he was one who walked. He walked on water. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. And he did it in the presence of people. So it was very hard to slander him, which meant that he that had uh, threatened the power base of, of the religious and political party of his day, the Bible calls them the scribes and the Pharisees, Jesus threatening that, that power, their power base, brought them to the point of decision. If they could not slander him to death, if they could not turn public opinion against him with, as the Bible says, false witnesses, then they would finally kill him. That that is a threat to the evil's power, to those who are evil, that hold power, those who threaten that power, is met with violence that is unshackled. They will nail Jesus to a cross. They will kill the very God of glory, if need be, to hold on to their power. So you know those who are these characters because they do exactly what the Bible shows us them doing, exactly what history shows us them doing, whenever it comes to the lust and the love of power. So we see it in our day today. 
We see the greatest evil manifested, and we can thank God for two things. We can thank God for Barack Obama, and we can thank God for Donald Trump. It was not until Barack Obama that the Democratic Party was really manifested for the radicals that they are. Whenever Mr. Trump came into power, he has now manifested not only the ways and the true mind of the Democrat, but by Mr. Trump's election, he has manifested these radicals' thirst and lust for power, the fear of losing it, and to the extremes of which they will go to keep it. Now again, this is modern day events that were the Bible being written today, these events would be recorded in the Bible. How that they did evil against. The Bible deals with kings throughout all of it. It deals with people in power, in places and positions of power. It deals with the judges who was the political powers of the day. It deals with the kings that was the political powers of their day. It deals with the scribes, the Pharisees and the Sadducees in Jesus' day who was the political powers. We're not talking about politics. We are talking about evil deeds being done and a easily controlled, uninformed, ignorant mass who is allowing themselves to be brainwashed by people who will butcher them after they give power to them. This is all that's ever happened in history. It's all that's going to happen unless you stop it when you see it manifested. Now, speaking of the evil of our present day, let's look at this business and this slander and these evil reports against a human being a human being's life, Donald Trump. He's the figure in place today of which is being assassinated. There is no question about that. Being assassinated. It is a cruelty that I have never seen in my life on this scale, on a full-blown national scale where lies are being told one behind, slander being reported one behind the other to butcher and destroy a man and accusing him of things he did not do. Why are we accusing another human being of doing things he has not done? If he is so bad, how come there's not a thousand things that are true that can be leveled at the man. Now listen, I won't go through in detail what you've already been through on the news on a, on a nightly basis. This insurance policy that a corrupt FBI agency from the top of the FBI, established by Barack Obama, who swore that he was going to fundamentally change the United States. You cannot do that without changing the law. So he filled the judges' benches. He filled the federal judges. He filled the DOJ. He filled all the law enforcement agencies with his cronies, with those who hate America and was after his mindset, and that was a hatred for America, and to destroy it. He corrupted the legal system. These are his people there. These are his people that has done this slander and an attempted coup to literally take down a voted in president of the United States of America. This man has been through a congressional hearing for three years. This man has been through a bipartisan Senate hearing for three years on this collusion And then the DOJ, and then a special counsel, four different bodies within the government with $40 million, 20 lawyers that was funders of Hillary Clinton after the man for three years nearly about it. And they come up with absolutely nothing, yet these slanderers still every night attempt to slander a man with what not only are false charges, but now at this point, he has been proven completely innocent. These people love their power so much, they are willing to literally 
let the enemy in. Our Constitution, those who swear themselves to office, swears that they will protect this country from enemies outside of it and enemies inside of it. I tell you now, with no partisan wrangling of any kind, uh, just a clear, simple fact. We have two major enemies of this country, inside this country. We have a bunch of them, but two major ones, the Democratic Party and the media. There is no question. There is a conspiracy. The two are one. They lie and they slander and they publish it 24 hours a day. These people crave and lust for power so much they bring the very vipers into this country. That will not only kill us, but when it's said and done, kill them too. I'm talking about the Muslim. Okay, do I understand and know that there is a good Muslim? I do understand that there are good Muslims. I understand there's good and bad and everything, but the institution, where there is the doctrine, where there are the mosque, where there are the teachers, 98% of them are radicals and they preach and teach murder. Let me show you something that took place in Philadelphia. That's the United States of America. At one of these mosques in Philadelphia, where they had their children up singing, singing about cutting and chopping our heads off. My Islam is calling. Who is going to heed its call? Rise, O righteous ones. Will Jerusalem be their capital city? Or will it be a hotbed for cowards? We will sacrifice our souls without hesitation. We will chop off their heads. Now, brothers and sisters, this is in the United States of America that these people are now being protected. Protected over and beyond that of Christianity. Christianity is being ridiculed. Christianity is being put out. Christianity is being maligned. Christianity is being mocked. You can mock Christians. You can mock churches. You can do anything with them you want to. But this is a class of people now being protected in the United States of America when the majority, not every one of them because there are exceptions to every rule, the majority and the large majority of them are radicals and they're murderers. Pure and simple, their lives, what they have done and what they have sworn and what they have promised and what their children now in our land sing about, cutting our heads off. And who is it that is behind this in the United States? The media and the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party and the mainstream media, which are one. And they are enemies to this country. Yes, the press should have the freedom that it has. It's in the Constitution. But you have those who have subverted. You have those who have come in and used the press as a means to say whatever slander they want to say. And it not be checked. Because they can't be sued. You can spout out lies after lies after lies of which has been proven false and still spout them out 24 hours a day, assassinating the character of other human beings. And there is no means whatsoever to stop them. The communist and those that seek the ruin and destruction of this country went into the media for the sole purpose of using that as a tool whereby they could not be censored to destroy this country. And we are supposed to protect this country from enemies within and without. There is no way possible that you can allow this stuff to go on in a country where in Dearborn, Michigan, they was throwing rocks and bottles at Christians who just was holding signs in their hands. 
Muslims were. Not a word said about it. Never shown on television. Now they're in their mosque all over this nation. The one in Philadelphia just happened to get caught teaching their children to sing about the cowards of Jerusalem and all that support them and their willingness to chop their, these are children. The Bible tells us, train up a child in the way they are to go and they will not depart from it. This is the purpose of it. This is the reason behind it. These are the slanderers. These are the murderers. These are the killers. And they're being turned loose on us by those slanderers, those who have conspired together. And they are destroying this country. Make no mistake about it. And the slander goes on in the ignorant minds of the masses who do not even know that they're being brainwashed. Sit there and soak this stuff up day after day, night after night. It is a proven fact that one cannot be brainwashed. Who knows that you're trying to brainwash him? This then tells us that 55, 50% of this country is absolutely brain dead. Now, to see the further wickedness and slander and the absolute lack of sympathy toward another human being's life, if that life stands in the way of their power. Let me take you to a congressional hearing with these Democrats. There is a black conservative woman named Candace Owens. She goes before them, the Congress, the Democrats, and one of the Democrat lawmakers takes a clip out of a statement, out of a whole speech she gave, takes a clip out of it to make it appear that she's praising Hitler, to show you the pure evil and wickedness behind these people and their disregard for any human life that will not or cannot vote for them. He then, after he plays the clip, does not even ask her to explain, but turns to one of those on his side to answer. Did not even give Candace Owens the right to even answer. Rude? No, it's beyond rude. This is cruel. You pull out lies, you fix up slander, and then do not even give the person an opportunity to answer the lying false charges that you just made. Of all the people that Republicans could have selected, they picked Candace Owens. I don't know Miss Owens, I'm not gonna characterize her. I'm gonna let her own words do the talking. So I'm gonna play for you the first 30 seconds of a statement she made about Adolf Hitler. I agree. I, I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, the definition gets poisoned um, by elitists that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in, at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist. But if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be speaking German. All right, so my uh, first question is to Ms. Hershenoff. Now, a Republican gives her the opportunity to speak for herself. She makes a statement that y'all must think that black people are stupid. And then this Jerry Nadler, one of the bosses of the Democrats, butts in and tells her she can't call uh, other members of the Congress names or speak when she did not call anybody on the Congress stupid. She said, you think black people are stupid, but Mr. Nadler evidently was asleep or just too ignorant to understand because it took him half of his life to get through law school. These are despicable souls. And when he's confronted with the facts of what he didn't hear, he just shrugs his shoulders. Yes, um, I think it's pretty apparent that uh, Mr. Liu believes that black people are stupid and will not uh, pursue the full clip in its entirety. He purposely presented an extract, an extracted witness, clip. The witness absent. will suspend for a moment. It is not proper to refer disparagingly or with, to a member of the committee 
Uh, the witness will not do that again. Witness may continue. Sure, even though I was called despicable. Um, witness may not refer to a member of the committee as stupid. I didn't refer to him as stupid. That's not what I said. That's not what I said at all. You, you didn't listen to what I said. May I continue? Wait, please. May I? May I? May I? Now you tell me how in the world any Republican in a congressional hearing or Senate hearing could deal with a black woman that way. Two of them ganging up on her. Wrong. Harassing her. How in the world could what you just saw possibly be done with all seriousness? How could what you just saw possibly be done by any two Republicans and it literally not be 24 hours a day on the news, screaming racism, calling it a lynch mob, ganging up on that black woman? How in the world could it not be said well, it is because there is a conspiracy, a conspiracy with the media and the Democrat Party. And black man, black woman, I'm telling you from the sincerity of my heart, and you will see. If you think that the Ku Klux Klan is not still alive in the Democratic Party, you are sadly mistaken. And all you have to do is go against them to find it out. But you give them power again and then go against them and you really going to find it out. I promise you, you can read from the book of Psalms 35, 11, and you will find as you go down a long list, 10 particular things that marks out what these wicked slanderers are. Bearing false witness is one of the marked signs. Accusing others wrongfully. Rewarding evil for good. Seeking destruction of others. Rejoicing in the adversity of others. Uniting together to commit sin. Secretly planning murder. Attacking the righteous. Joining hypocritical mockers. And number 10, hating and slandering others. What we have to do is we have to recognize that we are in a time that demands action on our part. Now, as I told you, coming out of the last election, I'll tell you again. We still have the power of the vote. We still have the ability to put people in office. You cannot just vote for a president you want. Put him there and then not put people around in the Congress and the Senate that will support the president you put in there. If you put a president in there, and then you do nothing to help secure the Congress and the Senate to be for the president you put in there. You've shot yourself in the foot. There is nothing he can do or very little. I urge you to please listen and pay attention. I urge you to put feet behind what you believe and go do what you are supposed to do. Now, with that said, let me tell you all this. Uh, we've taken a drastic hit again. It's been, it's been a very, very dry few months. And we're down now again to, to a significant level. Now, I've told you all I'm not here to make money, but I ain't here to lose it either. $10,000 is our mark, and we ain't too terribly far away from it. So uh, once we hit the 10000 mark, we're pulling the show. And I'm only telling you that because many of you have put in a lot, and I don't want to just you turn it on one night and us be gone. And y'all please remember, the address that you see on the screen is the only place that you send your offerings for them to reach this ministry. Also, I want to say that there's been a couple of people, a couple of letters has come in that has requested that we uh, mail out thank you letters to say thank you for the people who supported the program. This is a mission that we are all in together. My desire is, and what I am going to do, is have a television program where we do not ask for money and beg for money every night that we come on. Or in fact, we're not going to do it at all. We are going to take every dime, every single penny that you send to this ministry, and we're going to put it in this TV ministry. It doesn't buy any furniture. It don't buy no backdrops. 
It don't buy any food for me to eat. Every, if you send $100 to this ministry, $100, it pays nobody for nothing. You send $100, $100 goes into this ministry. Now, we don't send out mail because if we do, mail is very expensive. That's $100, $125, $130 a month. What that then means is that if I pay $130 to send out thank you letters, then someone is going to send in a $130 gift to the ministry for the television time, but it's not going to go for the TV time. It's going to go for stamps and postage. We're not going to do that. Now, everyone who responds to the ministry by PayPal or the computer, I send them a thank you Note every single time. I will do the same for you if it means that much to you. But what you need to do is you need to, the letters that you send in, put a text number where I can text you or either put a phone number where we can call you. If you'll put that number for us to text or call in your letter, then when we get it, we will call you and say thank you for what you've done to help us every single time. But, my conviction is I'm not going to demean the teaching of God's word by begging for money. And I am not going to ask you to send $100 to support this television ministry, the carrying forth of the word, and then take that $100 and spend it on letters going out saying thank you. I do thank you from the bottom of my heart. And we are a team. It goes without saying. But that's just the conviction here. I'm not going to take somebody's $130 who sent it for the television and pay it on nothing but the television. So send you a text number, a telephone number, and say that you would like for us to acknowledge your gift, and we will call you every single time that you do it. We need your help. If we're going to stay on the air, $10,000 is the limit. We've gone off the second it hits that, and we ain't far from it. Till the next time, God bless you. Love you in the Lord. Remember the one that talked to you When you were lost He told you what to do Remember the one That you leaned on When your world was ending And you were alone Look back at that cross, brother, as you walk off. Look at the treasures you will have lost. A blood wash family, your children and wife. Blessed assurance.